It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sports book app. It is a new, absolutely glorious week here on the Ross Tucker Podcast Network. We are diving into the Power Five conferences, the 10 best players in each conference with Emery Hunt on the College Draft Podcast. Make sure you check that out. College football will be here in like seven weeks. No, my math is terrible. Like five or six weeks, I think they have a game. Like August 20th or something insane. Get fired up. Speaking of insane, this O-line Masterminds event that I still haven't gotten to, it's been four years now, it's growing, it looks epic, I watch all the videos from it, I got to go, but I didn't go. So I'll be joined momentarily by my brother from another mother, Jeff Schwartz, one of my buddies, huge fan of Jeff and all his work he does across a bunch of platforms, we've got sort of similar things going on the media side, he was there. I think maybe he's been there every year. I don't know, but I, I want to get to the bottom of this. Like, are these guys really helping other people? Do the young guys have to pay to be there? Like, I, I just got a bunch of questions, and I figured a lot of you do as well, because I'm sure you've seen about this O-line Masterminds event on social media as well. It's a new week, so speaking of social media, we'll have a new Spread the Word winner via social media, at Ross Tucker NFL or at Ross Tucker Pod. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, just engage in any way. Easiest contest I'm aware of. Sponsor confirmation email winner. Love our sponsors. Love HelloFresh. I'm obsessed with my Raycon earbuds riding my bike around everywhere, especially down at the beach. Amazing. Listen, I listen to 80s and 90s greatest hits and just fly. It's like I'm like when when I the tiger comes on. I could win the Tour de France. I'm just telling you that I could win the Tour de France if I, the Tiger, was in my ears on my Raycon earbuds the entire time. We'll have the YouTube shout-out winner as well, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Today's patron shout-out, Ben Mullins. We've gotten a bunch more patrons recently. I think somebody wants to be in the DraftKings best ball draft with me and Joe. I see you, Ben Mullins. I, I feel you. I read you. I see it. I also see Big Show time. It's Jeff Schwartz. The Big Show. All right. So, Jeff, I never like it when I go on a show and a guy says, he's everywhere now. Ross, what are all the things that you're doing? But a lot of times my stuff does switch. And a lot of times your stuff does switch. And nobody knows what you're actually doing now better than you. And it also gives you a chance to promote what you're doing, like the unbelievable video series that you just finished up, which was amazing, by the way. I loved it. I'm jealous. Jealous isn't the right word. I'm envious. I just think it's so cool that you got to get with those guys. So anyway, what are you doing right now, Jeff? Hello. Yes, hello. Uh, it is a glorious week, like you said. College football, by the way, August 28th. The big boys start. Uh, uh, it's, uh, UCLA plays that weekend. So I, I'm excited for college football just as you are. Uh, yeah, I do a lot of things. Um, I hope to one day do less things at one specific place. We're working on that, but my podcast, Jeff Schwartz is Smarter Than You, uh, that's out there. You're right, the Big Boys Club, we did that with five uh, drafted linemen, and, and we got a great year, right? Panay Sewell, number one tackle. Rashawn Slater, number two tackle. Creed Humphreys, the first center off the board, I believe. Uh, Trey Smith was a steal by the Chiefs, and Quinn Miners, who everyone loves, out of Division Three, Wisconsin Whitewater, third-round pick of the Broncos. So we went through kind of a Gruden style quarterback camp. We did that for those guys. That's on YouTube. Go to my Twitter at Jeff Schwartz. I linked uh, to all, I think it's 11 videos now that we hit. We had one big show. We broke it up down into different, sh in, in different segments. And then uh, I know you're big into gambling. I do a lot of that. I uh, hope to have an announcement soon on, on where I'm doing it for this season. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm everywhere. You know, you know, this, this is where the game is, right? Ross, you have to kind of piece together things uh, for a little bit of time until you uh, find a, a home. So uh, I enjoy it. It's fun. And, uh, yeah, Masterminds in Dallas is the greatest thing ever. And you need to show up. You have an open invite. You can come anytime you want. 
Okay. By the way, it's funny. I think my email question today, I usually take one email question a day. I think my email question from a listener is, would you rather do all the stuff you're doing or just be at one place on a regular TV rotation, which I think is very interesting. Um, let's dive into the O-Line Masterminds event. I'll get to that email question a little bit later. So I'm very familiar with it, but we got thousands of listeners. Some of these people might have no idea what I'm even talking about. So let's start very generic. What is the O-Line Masterminds event, Jeff? Yeah, so it's a bunch of offensive linemen that get together and just and just talk shop. Um, if you recall, Von Miller started the Pass Rush Summit, I believe one year before Masterminds was started. He's done it five years now. We've done it four. And what happened, uh, the way this started was Lane Johnson was talking – it's kind of the talking heads on one of those NFL top 100 videos. I think it might have even been about Von Miller. And he said essentially that, look, there's a lot of pass rushers now over the right tackle. There used to not be. We need to like get together and talk about how to defeat them. And so my buddy Duke Manyweather, who trains all these college guys and a bunch of the pros, trains up to 40 uh, offensive linemen that are in the NFL, uh, he trained Lane. He hit up, hey, Lane, let's put this together. So they started – you started putting in a masterminds. The first year was small. It was uh, mostly veterans and guys that played a long time. Year two grew a little bit more. Now, year three was a COVID year, so less guys showed up. And this year, Ross, we had 160 guys there. Um, and we had and it, the best part about this year's edition was the young guys, right? There were, I counted maybe seven players in that room, seven to eight that had played more than five years. And, and half of those guys feel like retired guys. Me, but Brian Baldinger was there. Owen Kruitz was there. Uh, and then we had my brother and we had Teron Armstead and Ryan Jensen, Lane Johnson, Charles Leno. That, I think those were like the five guys, you know, five to eight guys that played more than more than five or six years in the NFL. The rest were young guys, my college guys, some high school kids, some young NFL players. And we just get together and just, and just share knowledge, man. If you pick up one thing from the event that can help you stop a defense alignment, it's a success. Okay. So – like, is anybody invited or do you have to get, I know you said I have an open invite, but is anybody invited? Like, do you have to pay? Like, how does that part of it work? What wait, is this? A, is this a uh, money-making event? Like, I'm just curious about the logistics. Yeah. So um, it's, it's invite only, essentially. Duke will invite you or you can ask for an invite. I've had plenty of people ask for invites. I sent it to Duke. Duke invites everyone to come. We don't pay anyone to show up. You don't have to pay to get in the seminar, but you know you have to find your way to, to to Dallas. And you know he has room blocks at hotels, and there's you know there's opportunities to go to dinner, and there's sponsors there that you can get some free swag from and meet some people. Look, even that we had we had shoe companies there, and helmet manufacturers, and protein, and energy drinks. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities to network with people and kind of just see um, you know if anything can help you uh, in your in your journey. And look. Not just offensive linemen. We had we had rehab people there that spoke to us about you know taking care of your body and, and the ways you can rehab and prehab and, and work out. We had a, a mental health expert there as well to talk about making sure your your mind is as strong as you are physically in the weight room. And so it's an all encompassing event. Yeah, man, you just have to Ross. If you want to come, you let me know. Duke sends you the invite. Like it's that simple. You show up. You don't show up. No one's paying you to come. You, you just you know we had look we had college we had college head coaches there. We had uh, a, a former NFL offensive line coaches there. We had current college O-line coaches there. Uh, we had media members there. Like, it, it's everyone's there to learn, man, and, and have fun and have some camaraderie. That is awesome on so many levels. And I got like a million questions as you're talking here. The, the prehab rehab thing, this is going to take us a little bit of a different direction, but I got to talk to you about this. Were you a cold tub guy? Um, I was a guy that liked to contrast. So you go hot, cold, hot, cold, but I, I didn't do it like every day. Like I wasn't like, I, I didn't need that to, for recovery. I did a lot during training camp. Um, but there are guys that sit in the cold tub for like 15 minutes a day. I feel like if you do that every day, that effect kind of wears off. So I posted this on social media recently, just Twitter. I got to do it to Instagram and Facebook. It like popped up on men's health on my Twitter feed. And I read the article. The latest science, Jeff, is that going in a cold tub doesn't help you and it actually hurts you. Like the inflammation, like you you need the inflammation. That is how your body repairs. And going in the cold tub just slows the repairing process. 
Jeff, when I was a rookie, I saw the older guys like Ben Coleman and Matt Campbell going in the cold tub. I went in for 20 minutes every day of my entire career. <laughs> every day. I went like, and I always had a bad back. So I went like almost up to my nipples. Oh. Okay. Oh. I went almost up to my nipples in whatever 40 degree water, 50 degree water it is for 20 minutes every day. And not only did it not help my career, it hurt my career. <laughs> and Jeff, I'm very upset about this. Yeah, like I said, I, I just did contrast during training camp and maybe like on Mondays after a game, I kind of get in the contrast. Again, that gets like, it's hot for a minute, cold for a minute, hot for a minute, cold for a minute. And then I would, I would be done. I never, you know, it just never felt like it, 20 minutes in a cold tub. I never felt much, much better. I just felt much colder. Um, and, you know, and my when my ankle was jacked up, I'd have to ice that in a in a, in a trash a trash bucket every day, um, just so I could basically walk after practice. But I that did. But look, Ross, you you, you know this. I, a month later, we're gonna have a research saying the cold tub is the way to go. It's the only way to to you know to help your body get back into shape to play. So these studies go back and forth. It's more about what works for you, and this is why Mastermind is so great, right? No one's there to tell you how to do something, but we can give you suggestions on how to do it, right? When you hear Lane Johnson talk about how he rehabs or how he prehabs, how he prepares for a season, you hear my brother talk about it. You hear we had a former NFL trainer in the room. You hear a, another specialist. And so if you take away one thing that helps you, that, that in my opinion, is, is, is the most important thing, right? If, if you know someone says, hey, this is the way I did things and you do that, then that works. For example, one, one thing that was brought up, and I did this during my career, later in my career, and it really helped, is – is the idea of, of lifting on Mondays after games, right? Guys are sore. They don't want to do it. It's a great way to get inflammation out of your body and get your body back moving and start feeling better if you lift on Monday. So after games, I'd start doing this in my sixth year. I would do my legs on Monday. And like, yeah, I'm not back there putting 500 on the bar, but just getting that flush out with your with your legs felt great. And then Tuesdays, i just go push a sled. No weight on the sled, go up and down the field about 10 yards, 15 yards. So we, so we talked about different ways to do that. And that's one thing that if you took away from that was, hey, I should lift on Mondays and Tuesdays. All the veterans said that. Like They, they all went in there like, look, I lift on Mondays. I lift on Tuesdays. Again, not a lot, not a heavy lift. But if you took one thing away from that and that was it, and that helped your body better prepare to play the next Sunday, then it's a win to come for the seminar. That That is what the research says. That – that promotes like the inflammation, like that, that promotes the healing process. Yes. Cold tub slows it down. <laughs> I spent an inordinate amount of time in my life making my career worse. I mean, maybe I would have been like Larry Allen. Like maybe, <laughs> I mean, Jeff, maybe, maybe I could have been like unbelievable. I sabotaged my own career. Speaking of your brother, by the way, is there like what what is his status right now? I, I didn't even ask you. I, I wasn't even gonna ask yeah. you that. And then you mentioned him. He's, he's a free agent, right? Yeah, he's still yeah, he's rehabbing, uh his back injury still. Um, and you know, camp's getting close. So um we'll see who calls and, and what he decides to do. Um obviously, I don't know what the spots are available now for tackle, and obviously at the rate that he would like to be paid to play that position, we'll we'll find out. You know, there's obviously camp injuries and whatnot. Um, and, we'll, and we'll see how it goes for him. He looked good. He's, he's healthy, I think. He's, he's ready to go if a team wants to sign him. Uh, is there any chance he would just say, I'm not going to, you know, somebody tries to sign him for whatever, I'm not going to play for that much, and I'm just done? I, I think there's a possibility for that. I mean, it, you know, if you're going from, um, you know, from what is he making, $9, $10 million a year, and someone pays you three, and it's on a one-year contract, I don't know. I mean, you know, that's thing when you get older, right, is – do you want to play just that one more season for X amount of money? Or do you want to sign a two or three year deal? Like if you are as good as him, the signing a, a one or two, a one year deal for two or $3 million after you've made nine or 10 for multiple years in a row. I don't know. It doesn't feel like a lot of veterans might, might go that path, especially guys like him. So we'll find out if teams need right tackles, if they're willing to pay him. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, he's made four all pros. He won a super bowl. He's the best right tackle in the NFL for, for many years. I think he's comfortable with that. So there will be an injury, and he will have an opportunity if he wants it. I am fascinated. Like, I could do a whole article on these decisions. Like, your brother in nine years, uh, just from base salary and stuff, has made a little over $43 million, okay? Yes. So let's just say, you know, with the other stuff, let's just say he's got over $20 million in the bank account. 
I always think it's interesting. Like on the one hand, you know, if he plays for three million dollars after taxes, let's just say it's one and a half. What else is he going to do this year for for one and a half million? You know, for three million dollars, right? Like, there's nothing else your brother's going to do this year in the next four months for three million dollars. On the other hand, a million and a half probably doesn't make that much of a difference in his life with how much money he's already made. And another injury or re-injuring the back does make a big difference in his life. Exactly. I always think these decisions at this stage are just for guys that have been that successful and made that much money are really interesting. And I think a lot of times guys do it for the Super Bowl ring. He's already won his Super Bowl ring, right? He doesn't have to go take less money to secure a legacy. And we say that often, man. Look, I would have done it in my career. I'm sure you would have done it in your career. Hey, I'll take less than I'm worth if I have a chance to win a Super Bowl. Right, because I, I you you didn't win a Super Bowl, right? I don't think. I don't no, think you, yeah, I didn't either. I mean, I in my career, at the end of my career, as, as beat up as I was, if someone was like, "Hey, you take less money to go win a Super Bowl," I think we'd all do it, right? We see a lot of veterans do this all the time: take less money, go to the Patriots, go to the Chiefs. We've seen players do that as well, and you win that Super Bowl, and then your legacy is set. So for him, I'm not sure unless the team is Super Bowl ready now, and that that is kind of like the Chiefs or Tampa Bay. I mean, there's not a lot of teams I think you could say, "Hey." We're ready to win this year. Maybe the Bills and the Browns, I feel like, are pretty good contenders. The Packers possibly as well. If, if Rodgers, I think, will come back and he'll be there pretty soon. Um, you know, Otherwise, I, I don't see him going to play for a bad team for a million and a half dollars or $3 million. I, that, that doesn't feel like something um, he'd want to do or, or really I would even advise him to do. Um, two more questions. One is... The weird thing I think is, you know how it was when we were players. There are some veterans that would help the young guys, you know, during practice and camp. The other guys that wouldn't, they, they weren't about to help a yeah. guy that might take their job or that might be able to beat them out at some point. They weren't helping that kid. Other guys were like, yeah, man, do this, do that. The thing I think is interesting about the masterminds is, like, you're, you're helping guys, you're, like, Lane Johnson, right? You said Mitchell Schwartz yeah. is the best right tackle in the NFL. I think Lane Johnson thinks he is, right? right so, yeah. like, like, do you really want to help the guy that you're competing with for first team all pro? Like, do you want to give him advice? Or even, like, yeah. you know, um, let's say Rashawn Slater was there and, yeah, and he was Beckton there, yeah. and the other guy. Do you really want to help the guy you're competing with? First of all, he's on a different team. Second of all, like, that's who you're competing with for Pro Bowls and all pro yeah. and stuff. What's interesting about the Slater is, is Slater and my brother talked for a long time. Like we had breakout sessions where, you know, we kind of met as a group and we talked some things over, watched some film, and then we had breakout sessions and kind of the veterans led, you know, Ryan Jensen led a big one in Toronto Armstead. And my brother and Rashawn were off to the side talking for a long time. And the next day, too, did, did the same thing. Um, look, a lot of guys that are there are very secure with who they are as a player. I mean, they've, they've been there a long time. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of veterans there. But also something that, that we that we take away every year from this is there's different ways to do things, right? So you mentioned Lane and, and my brother. They're two different players, right? They're, the techniques they use to, to stop someone are totally different. So Lane is not going to get something from my brother uh, technique-wise that's going to change the way he plays. Maybe a preparation, maybe a way Mitch studies the game. But again, I don't think Lane is, is going to take that from my brother. And my brother doesn't play like Lane either, right? He doesn't take that big first kick. He's not a big, strong double under guy like Lane is. So the things that Lane is talking about, how to stop a, a certain pass rusher, is not what my brother's going to do, right? Mitch is very patient. That's why I think he's really good against Von Miller and these, these hands guys, right, that you have to use your hands. Mitch doesn't show his hands very well. He vertical sets, which Lane does a little bit of it, but they get there a different way. And so there's nothing that those two guys specifically were going to take from each other that's going to really change each other's games. I think it's the young guys that hear, okay, this is a way you can do it. This is another way you can do it. That's something that we preach is that – Ross, you know this. There's not one way to block a guy, right? There, there's, and I think that we've in the online community, we often get to, um, especially in the lower level, we're like, there's there's one way to do things. There's not one way to do things, right? Everyone plays a little bit differently. Now, there's certain principles: hands inside, right? Elbows inside. You know, you know, head over the knees, like bend your hips. There's certain things that that make sense on how to get into a block and make you successful. But there, there's there's some guys that throw two hand haymakers. There's, there's some guys that that independent hand uses. There's some guys that punch and grab or, or grab with like double under, right? So guys do it differently. So I think what we take away from this seminar is there's many different ways to, to do it. And it's okay if you do it differently than, than, than someone else. But the principles of hand placement and finish and where your feet are supposed to be are all kind of the same. 
Jeff, that that was, I think, the best thing you've said so far. I totally agree. Uh, look, I had nine offensive line coaches. Okay, I had six, yeah. And and Jeff, none of them were the exact same. And right. in fact, some of them, they're like their whole thesis was like total opposite. Right. Like Jim McNally, everything was on an angle. Like if you weren't on an angle, you're doing it wrong. Joe Bugle, your shoulders better be square. Or he's gonna kill you. You know, like <laughs> and yes. it's total opposite. McNally yeah. be like, why are your shoulders square? And Bugle be like, why are your shoulders? I'm like, ah, <laughs> like the other thing between the cold tub and nine o line. If I just had one o line coach and no cold tub, I'm, I'd be in the hall of fame right now. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I'm kidding, obviously, but I'll give you an example. I think vertical setting is one of the dumbest things there is. Like I, I could never do I that. I, I have short arms. I would never give a guy that much of a runny at me. Correct. I, I played all five. I was a close the distance guy. Same. I, I was get out to him and start the fight as soon as possible. Correct. I don't know how you vertical set and stop the bull like these guys do. You give the guy a five-yard runny at you, but somehow your brother evidently does it, and I just think and, – and, like, there are coaches that are like, you got a vertical set, you got a vertical set. Oh, 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 I would have gotten my butt run over if I vertical set. I had to jump that dude, and I had to jump that dude now. Well, I mean, Mitch learned from Joe Thomas, right? He was there in Cleveland when, when Joe was there, and Joe was a vertical set guy too, right? Now, Joe can mix it up, and so does Mitch, right? He, he, but I'm with you. Like, I, I played some tackle in my career. It's where I started at, you know, third down vertical set. I'm like, ugh. Like, I just – I please, like, I can't – I'm not good at that. And Mitch – every time I watch Mitch play – the most interesting thing is, like, guys are just going to bull rush him back to the quarterback. You know, he's setting straight back, and they never do it. Like, his anchor, and it's the way his hand – it's unbelievable, Ross. I don't know how he does it. I mean, he sets straight back, like, on third down. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how he does it. I could never do it. Um, and, and to your point, like, I wouldn't advise probably 90% of the NFL to, to, to vertical set, but he does it. Lane does it. I mean, I don't know. These guys are – I play with Jordan Gross in Carolina. Jordan Gross with vertical set, like a madman. He was great at it. Uh, it takes a lot of skill to be able to make contact kind of as you're drifting backwards, really with a, in, you're not really in a power angle, right? You're just kind of going back and you're trying to anchor and uh, it's, it's incredible skill he has. Check him out on social media at Jeff Schwartz. Uh, one of my favorite guests. I have him on a couple times a year because he's an absolute stud. And when I saw the O-line mastermind stuff, I just had a bunch of questions. I figured a lot of you guys did as well. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the show. Again, if you check out Jeff on social, you can find out all the stuff he's doing. Those videos that are amazing, his podcast. We'll find out where he's doing the betting stuff this year at Jeff Schwartz. Thanks, man. Take care, buddy. Man, that was awesome. That was like a mini O-line masterminds right there. How about the mastermind that is the guy that created Raycon earbuds? First of all, Great sponsor to get in on the best ball draft. Great sponsor. Secondly, this has been a game changer in my life. So I had never been a huge earbud guy because I usually work out at home. Well, I've been spending a lot of time on a bunch of weekends at the beach, and I've been riding my bike a lot, and I needed some music. So I got my Raycon earbuds. I put them in. Dude, I'm telling you, my workouts have improved by like 10 to 15%. Not only that, if I go for like a walk on the beach, and I, I do like walks on the beach, I do push-ups, you will see me with my blue Raycon earbuds in, and I will be like talking to my wife or talking to my mom. Incredible. I mean, the phone quality is incredible. Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for my listeners. That's you. Here's what you got to do to go get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tucker. There you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. And it's such a good deal. You'll want to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Tucker. Buyraycon.com slash Tucker. Tuck Stakes. All right, good morning, Ross. Uh, not a good weekend in the legal department for the NFL. Chiefs defensive end Frank Clark formally charged with possession of an assault uh, of an assault weapon, and uh, Falcons cut linebacker Barkevius Mingo after he was charged with indecency with a child. 
So we can talk to Andrew about this on Wednesday, Andrew Brandt, but I already saw his tweet. Uh, there was not enough talent for Barkevius Mingo to merit tolerance for this. You know, obviously he's come out and said this is from a couple of years ago and he's totally in in innocent and the legal process will unfold now. But the Falcons, he wasn't worth it to them to stand by him as he goes through this process. If this were Grady Jarrett or Matt Ryan, I think it'd probably be a little different. They'd probably, but also they know that they know those guys more. Mingo, they just got. As for Frank Clark, we talked about this before. Look, let those by among us that haven't had an Uzi in our Lamborghini, let them cast the first stone, okay? Who, which one of us hasn't had gotten pulled over with an Uzi in our Lamborghini? I just think that they're being real. I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. Hopefully. Now, now I get an email. Oh, it's not anything to joke about or uh, whatever. You guys know I'm, I'm, I'm making light of it. It's not funny. We'll see what happens. I would guess Frank Clark, one way or the other, misses some football games this year. Ducks takes. On the positive side, Scott Hansen resigned a multi-year deal with the NFL Network to host the NFL Red Zone channel. Seven hours of commercial-free football starts now. Look, I don't talk about media stuff that much on, on this show. I talk about football, right? But I love the NFL Red Zone channel. On Sundays, that's where I usually am. I'm watching the Red Zone channel because I want to talk about all your teams. I think it's a tremendous product. I think Hanson does a remarkable job, and I'm glad. I hope he's the guy for as long as I'm watching football. Duck Stakes. And lastly, the Washington football team will evidently, they will have a new name and logo. Early 2022, this is according to team president Jason Wright. So I got to get Jason on the show at some point, and uh, I am fascinated, like I'm sure a lot of people are, very intrigued to find out what the team name is, what the logo will be. Makes it sound like it'll be a new team, a new logo and a new name. And since they didn't get the uh, trademark protection of Washington football team, it probably will be. Um, I think I've got a couple more spots for the best ball. So if you buy the Raycon earbuds or you do the Warby Parker home try on, a couple people did that. I think I got one more Warby Parker home try on spot. I said the first three people that did that Warby Parker home try on deal, you were in. Um, the patrons can get in. We're going to have a lot of people. I'm, I'm announcing six people to be in the best ball against me and Joe over the next two two weeks of the Fantasy Feast podcast. So that'll be it. That'll be the final six. And then we go. We'll do another one in August. We'll do a season-long draft as well. Uh, let's get to an email, Brian. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, here's your chance. It's time to Ask Ross. The email address is ross at rosstucker.com. If you ever take advantage of any sponsor and send it to me, I guarantee to read and respond to your email on the show. Go ahead, Bright. Uh, Ross, for your career, would you rather have multiple podcasts, investments, and radio, and Army games, or would you rather have a regular TV rotation? Like when you were... Uh, Oh, like when you were called a wannabe Mark Schlereth, uh, tribute to the old jokes. Uh, that is from Ted. Hashtag Daddy Soda. I love it, Ted. You know, Ted, I really, I think I'm just a happy person, but um, I love my life pretty much just the way it is. Like, I love my life. I have tremendous gratitude for the things I have in my life. Now, like if CBS, who I work for, ever said, we want you to do the SEC games or want you to do an NFL game every Sunday, I wouldn't turn that down. Like, that'd be awesome. But I'm so grateful for the Army games. I don't know. Regular TV rotation. Look, I'm trying to provide as good of a living as possible for my family talking about football. So if there was a regular TV rotation – that was lucrative, then I would certainly consider it. But that also sounds like a lot more time away from home, which I'm not as interested in, Ted. So 
I think I like what I'm doing now. If I could just, you know, move up the ranks on the the games I broadcast, that'd be great. But that's it. I love doing Westwood One NFL games on the radio. And I love doing Army games on TV. So, and I love doing the Eagles preseason games. So, um, I think I like it the way I am now because if you have one of those regular TV rotations and then you get fired, then you have nothing. You know, then you're, then you're, then you got nothing. So, I kind of like that I have a I diversified media and uh, business portfolio. Good question, Ted. I love them. Shout outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 